Hi everyone, um, so my name is Rachel Bigney. Um, I currently work for Urban Green Newcastle um, as part of the Beelines North East project, but I've recently just finished my master's at the University of Glasgow. And whilst I was doing my master's, I was involved in a really, really great project. Um, it's currently still ongoing, uh, that was looking at floral complexity um, as a new um, tool for conservation um, within plant biology. So that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. So um, we'll start off just a little introduction. Um, as I'm sure you're all aware, um, many native plant species have been experiencing abundance and distribution declines um, and extinctions, not just within Britain, um, but within Europe and worldwide. Um, and these um, declines in plant species is a growing threat um, to our, our global biodiversity. So a sort of a common question within um, plant conservation um, is why are some species um, declining and threatened with extinction whilst others remain common? Um, and we can carry out sort of population studies on plant species that are either related or ecologically similar um, but vary in abundance um, and we can get really beneficial information from those types of studies. Um, and we can use that information to um, put forward um, sort of conservation actions um, in order to protect the rare species. But as you can imagine, that takes a lot of time and resource and it's not practical to do that for every rare taxa. Um, it's, we just can't um, do those types of studies. Um, so for example, um, in Europe, there are almost 2,000 threatened um, plant species. And this represents about 15% of European flora. Um, so like I said, it's really just not practical to um, carry out population studies on every single threatened species. So with the project that I was working on as part of my master's, we were looking at um, plant traits um, and the correlation that it has with species extinction risk. Um, and this um, is a much more easier and feasible measure um, in plant conservation. So what I mean by this is um, there are certain plant traits um, that are more correlated with um, extinction risk. So for example, if we know some certain plant traits um, make a plant more vulnerable to extinction, then if we have a plant that we don't know the conservation status for, but we know that it has some of these plant traits, we can almost predict that um, it's going to struggle um, in terms of extinction. Um, so we can predict that it's going to be vulnerable and put those conservation actions in place, almost as like a preventative measure. Um, but we need to sort of identify these plant traits um, and which ones are sort of making plants more vulnerable to extinction if there are some. Um, so we know already um, that plant vulnerability is affected by different factors and traits. So for example, um, there are some intrinsic traits that have been um, related to plant vulnerability. So what I mean by intrinsic traits, these are either sort of genetic traits, physiological traits um, of a plant. Um, so they are, you know, intrinsic to that species and not affected by the environment. Um, and there are also been extrinsic factors that have been um, associated with plant vulnerability as well. Um, so these are environmental factors. Uh, so for example, habitat. Um, there are sort of certain habitats that um, the plants within those habitats are at more risk of extinction. Um, so for example, species in agricultural landscapes, um, for common reasons obviously with our land management practices, um, of sort of land conversion, habitat loss, and um, that we see in agricultural areas, of course that um, is putting a threat on these plant species in that area. So we know already that there are some factors um, and traits that are affecting plant vulnerability. But we want to look um, within this project at floral complexity. So here we have two flowers. Now, you can probably tell from the get-go which one's the complex one and which one is the simple one. Uh, so on the left-hand side, we have um, a more, what we call a more complex sort of architectural structure. Um, and on the right-hand side, we have a much more simple sort of 
open disc shaped flower. Um, now when we say it's sort of architecturally complex, um, we're really meaning that it's harder for pollinators um, to access that flower's pollen and nectar. Um, so of course, just generally speaking, um, pollinator is attracted to a plant um, to get that sweet reward of nectar and pollen. Um, and whilst it is collecting that, it sort of indirectly um, pollinates the flower by carrying pollen over to the next flower. Um, so, I mean, that's the basics of pollination. Um, but these flowers have sort of evolved these really complex traits, um, which means it's made it's harder for pollinators to pollinate that flower. Um, and it also takes a special kind of pollinator um, that I'll touch on in a little bit. Uh, but these are some of the sort of characteristic um, sort of traits that these complex flowers can have. Uh, so for example, bilateral symmetry, that means that um, the if flower of the petal only has one axis um, and this has been associated with needing more sort of advanced flower handling from a pollinator. Uh, another one, long corolla tubes. Um, so basically at the end of the corolla tube you, you'll find sort of the nectar pots um, that the, the pollinator is evidently after. Um, and what pollinators do, they have a proboscis which is their tongue and it almost they, they act like it's kind of acts like a straw um, to, for them to suck up the nectar. Um, so if a plant's got a really long corolla tube, um, then that pollinator needs a long proboscis in order to access that nectar. Um, so it already sort of creates that sort of specific relationship that it needs, needs that type of pollinator to access the nectar. Um, and in other ones as well, you know, the downwards or sideways facing corollas, again, this just makes it harder um, for, pollinators to access um, access the nectar. Um, so it requires that, again, specialised pollinator. So I guess you might kind of wonder, like, why? Why do we have these really complex flowers? Why have they evolved to need and rely on such a specific pollinator? Um, and sort of the idea behind it is that specialised pollinators are sort of um, associated with being better pollinators. Um, so these flowers have um, evolved to become more complex and rely on specialised pollinators because they know um, that they've got a better chance of successful pollination um, with these specialised pollinators. Um, so even though they're relying on sort of a smaller subset of pollinators, um, because not all pollinators say have long corolla tubes, um, but they know that the ones that are accessing the nectar and pollinating the plant have um, a much better chance of actually doing the job correctly. Um, so that's kind of the thought behind um, the crazy evolution of these really complex structural flowers. So um, like I mentioned, you know, we have these sort of extrinsic factors um, that can um, influence a plant's vulnerability. Um, and pollinators are an important one. Um, a lot of plants rely on animal pollination um, in order to set seeds and reproduce. Um, so you can imagine that in a habitat or, um, sort of region where pollinators are in decline, um, that could significantly affect um, certain plant species um, if they solely rely on animal pollination because they're just not getting um, that pollination and that reproduction. Um, so it can be very serious. So, like I've mentioned, flowers um, possess a selection, and um, some flowers possess a selection of these complex features. Um, and these features can restrict a pollinator's access to, you know, the plant's pollen and nectar. So whether they've got the long corolla tubes, um, petal fusion, um, the one petal access, or all of them, <laughs> um, it can make it really hard for, for pollinators to get to. And this is what we call a specialised pollinator. So these pollinators, you know, either have sort of advanced flower handling skills, um, have these long um, proboscises um, where they can reap the rewards, they can access these complex flowers nectar. And the other sort of pollinator we have are the generalist pollinators. Um, they genuinely have shorter tongues um, and can't access um, the nectar and pollinate these more complex flowers. 
um, so they generally visit uh, the more simple flowers. Um, but some of the, you know, the relationships can be really specific. Um, so there are, you know, some pollinators that can only pollinate um, one specific plant species. Um, there are some plant species that only rely on a really small sort of um, set of species. Um, so it can be very restricting. Um, and you can imagine, you know, with all the sort of pressures that species are facing, that if one starts to decline, it's, you know, detrimental for the other. Um, especially if you've got this such a close relationship between two species, um, it can be very catastrophic. Um, so yeah, like I mentioned, um, specialised pollinators um, have this sort of close, close-knit relationship with these more architecturally complex flowers. Um, this is a photo actually I took um, a couple of years ago um, that just, I think, brilliantly shows the proboscis of a, so this is a bumblebee that I found in my garden, giving you know a wee bit of sugar water uh, to help it along its way, but you can see um, the, the really long proboscis um, that a lot of um, plants need, really, for, for the, the, the bee or the other pollinator to access, access that nectar. Um, so yeah, they're, they're pretty cool. So like I mentioned, a loss of um, these specialist um, pollinators could result in um, the increased likelihood of pollination failure for um, these complex flowers. Um, and this could be, um, you know, really sort of detrimental, especially for these already rare and threatened plants. Um, so, you know, there could be a loss of specialists for various reasons, you know, they could vary naturally, um, you know, spatially or over time, um, or they could um, be a loss of specialists um, in a region, you know, due to, to human factors. Um, there's lots of sort of pressures that um, bees and other pollinators are facing, you know, from pesticide use to habitat loss and um, disease and climate change. So um, there are a lot of drivers out there um, that are causing a lot of species declines. Um, and unfortunately, um, research has shown that it seems to be the specialised pollinators that are those with the higher rates of extinction. Um, and unfortunately, they do have this close relationship with these complex flowers. Um, so it means that these, these flowers um, may face a higher risk of extinction. Um, and this sort of point is this sort of um, driving factor of the research that is being done um, to try and figure out if this is the case. So the project that I was a part of um, during my master's um, are sort of hypothesis um, is that if in an explored flora where um, plants, if the plants um, in the explored flora have more complex flowers and those are the ones that are more threatened um, by extinction, then we can sort of, in an unexplored flora, we can sort of identify the plants that are probably um, going to be threatened with extinction because they have those complex flower traits. Um, so we can almost sort of predict which flowers um, are going to be at risk of extinction. Um, and what I mean here as well, included in the red data book, um, a lot of countries have this red data book of the uh, rare and threatened species um, in, in their country. Um, so usually the plant vulnerability um, is expressed as threat status um, using the same criteria as the International Union um, of Conservation of Nature. Um, so you might have seen this before, um, they do it for you know, all species um, where they have this sort of least concern of vulnerable, endangered, um, but unfortunately a lot of plants um, we don't know the conservation status for um, and this is sort of the idea that we need this sort of new tool um, for assessing um, plant status. So I'm going to introduce the Floral Complexity Index to you, um, which sort of captures um, a plant's sort of structural complexity. So this index was first introduced by Anastasia um, Stefanaki and her colleagues in Greece um, back in 2015. Um, so it considers um, floral complexity 
as the plant's selectivity for pollinators. So kind of like I was talking about um, some of these plant species really require that specialised pollinator and they have these certain traits that sort of select the pollinator that they, they need um, to do the job. And the index is used, um, can be used to explore whether floral morphology um, could be used to predict plant vulnerability to extinction. So the index um, is made up of five variables um, that all sort of determine floral complexity. Um, so I'll talk you through the sort of five variables that's included. So the first one we have is um, floral shape. So um, these snapshots that I'm going to have on the screen for the next few slides are all from my um, master's thesis. So we basically, all the plant species that we're looking at that are insect pollinated, um, we categorise them um, into floral shape categories. Um, so for example, see, um, image C, we can see again that sort of simple dish shaped flower. Um, whereas if we compare that to say, um, image I, that is a lip shaped flower um, from the orchid family. Um, and this is a more complex shape as it requires, you know, that specialised pollinator that's got that advanced flower handling. Um, so we characterised um, plants based on their floral shape. Next, uh, the next variable that we looked at was floral depth. Um, so like I've mentioned about the corolla um, tube length, um, obviously a longer corolla tube, again, requires that more specialised pollinator. So we categorised the plants we were looking at um, into one of three categories. So we had low, low floral depth, um, medium floral depth and high floral depth. Um, and this was determined by corolla tube length. So, for example, we um, categorised high floral depth um, as any flower with um, a corolla tube more than 10, 10 millimetres um, in size. Um, so again, sort of creates, again, that more complexity having long corolla tubes. Um, so the next one was floral symmetry. So um, we've got these two, two symmetries. We've got the radial, um, radially symmetrical and we've got um, bilaterally symmetrical. Uh, so radially means that there's more than there's several axes, um, whereas bilateral, um, there's only that one petal axis, um, axis sorry. So basically, research has shown that um, bilateral um, symmetry requires that, again, more advanced flower handling, so that more specialised pollinator. Um, so again, floral symmetry sort of adds that next level of, of complexity um, for flower. So just a, you know, another hoop for the, the pollinators to, to jump through in order to get that nectar reward. Um, okay, so the, the fourth variable within the index um, that we looked at was corolla segmentation. So, so what I mean as well by corolla, um, the corolla is basically um, made up of the, the flower petals. Um, so for example, in A here, so basically we categorise the plant again according to corolla segmentation um, and they were into one of three categories. Um, so we have A here, which is um, full petal fusion. Um, you know, all petals are fused, kind of self-explanatory. Um, B, we have no petal fusion at all. Um, and C, we have that sort of partial um, petal fusion. Um, and again, research has shown that petal fusion um, requires, again, that extra flower handling um, that um, specialised pollinators can bring. Um, okay, and finally, the last variable within the index is the floral reproductive unit. Um, so that this was looking at the um, inflorescence of the flower. Um, so that's sort of the whole sort of head of, of the plant. Um, and again, categorised into three categories. So we have A, the single flower, B, um, the umbel, so that's more of a sort of kind of flat, symmetrical inflorescence, and then C, which is our racing um, inflorescence. So that's um, sort of cylindrical, quite clustered um, together. And I guess you can maybe kind of tell from the image, it looks a lot easier for a pollinator to access um, the flower on its own in image A than it is for C. C is a lot more closer together and again it just requires that extra flower handling. Um, so again, 
the inflorescence can you know add to the, the complexity of the of the flower um, and again making it more difficult for the, the pollinator to access the nectar. So yeah, so the floral complexity index um, is made up of these um, five variables. Um, and the idea is that each variable and the levels within it um, were all um, given a weight, a number, um, depending on um, you know, the, how much it sort of influenced the, the complexity um, of the flower. So the idea is that um, if you've got a plant species um, and you know um, it's plant traits, you can basically work out um, and calculate the floral complexity index, um, you know, how complex that flower shape is. So um, Anastasia um, and our colleagues in Greece um, sort of put the floral complexity index um, into use back in 2015. Um, so they used their floral complexity index to look at um, plant vulnerability in Greece um, and to see if um, the plant vulnerability um, increased with floral complexity. So they used the, the red data book um, of plants in Greece, again looking at insect pollinated plants. And they actually found that um, plants with higher floral complexity were significantly more likely to be threatened with extinction. So this is a, a snapshot of a figure from their paper, um, which I do recommend reading. It's, it's really, really interesting. Um, so along the, the bottom axis here, we have um, sort of conservation status. So we've got more threatened and less threatened, again, um, based on that IUCN criteria. So, you know, Plants within the more threatened category um, had the status of, you know, rare, um, at risk of extinction, extinct in the wild, so on. Um, and those within the less threatened category were, you know, those of least concern or vulnerable. Um, and it's quite clear from the graph, you know, we can see that plants within the more threatened category have a higher um, average for complexity index number. Um, which basically means that um, they scored higher um, in the floral complexity index, which means that they're they're more complex um, in their shape. So they've got more of those um, factors that we're talking about um, that makes them more complex. So really, there's that sort of strong correlation, um, and it's significant as well. Um, that strong correlation between um, being threatened with extinction and having a complex floral shape. So that's a really really interesting find. Um, so yeah, so the plant taxa, um, like I said, with the more complex floral features require that specialised pollination um, and they can be confronted with a higher risk of extinction um, where there's this lack of pollination services. Um, so um, yeah, so Anastasia and her colleagues found that floral complexity um, sort of increased a plant's risk of extinction in Greece. Um, but we want to now look at this um, across Europe and see if it's a case um, in other regions. So the project that I was a part of during my masters that is, sternly, that is currently still going um, within the Conserve Plants Action, um, the, this project looked at assessing flora complexity as plant vulnerability indicator of European flora. Um, so it was really a pan-European assessment of floral complexity um, that was led by Anastasia um, and Thedora at the University of Bergen in Greece. Um, but the project consisted of 50 researchers um, from 34 European countries, um, with myself um, collecting the data for Great Britain. And we, each country, used their red data books where, um, where possible. Um, to collect plant trait data for all the insect pollinated species in that country. So I used the um, Great British Red Data Book um, and basically recorded all the plant trait data um, for insect pollinated species we have here in Great Britain. Um, so, you know, I recorded for species, you know, the floral shape, the corolla depth and so on and so on. Um, so all the data has been collected now within the project, um, which is exciting. And um, Anastasia and Theodora and their team um, are now sort of undergoing the data analysis site. Um, so like I said, it's still an ongoing project um, and it'll be really exciting to see 
the results um, and it could be, um, you know, in the case of evidence, really, really um, sort of solid evidence um, for this new sort of conservation tool. Um, so yeah, really looking forward to seeing the results um, and seeing if it's not just in Greece, you know, in this um, um, as a case across Europe. So yeah, so possible risk of, um, there's this possible risk that global pollinator decline is increasing plants proneness to extinction um, by interacting with the structural floral complexity. So like I said, there's, we've got these such close relationships between complex flowers and specialised pollinators that, I mean, if a plant is relying on a really small subset of species um, and these species are declining, it, it's going to have really sort of serious knock-on effects. Um, and unfortunately, um, pollinators are experiencing a lot of declines um, worldwide. Um, so this is sort of like a real issue. Um, that we're having to tackle. Um, so using these floral traits that we've talked about, um, we can hopefully use these traits um, to recognise um, plants that are at risk. Um, so in the case of evidence that we have, we could, this could really constitute a tool for assessing plants um, of which we don't have any conservation status data. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to identify um, which plants um, may be at risk of extinction because they've got these complex traits. And like I said, we can sort of put in that preventative measure um, to protect those species. Um, and it's great, I mean, within the past, um, like in recent years, there's been a real sort of um, boost in the amount of plant trait data that we have. That we have these sort of plethora of databases online that have all these plant traits for all these species, um, which makes studies like we were doing for this project um, a lot more feasible um, because we just have all that data at our fingertips now. So hopefully it's going to be a really exciting new tool, um, which we really need um, within plant conservation um, biology because, um, like I said earlier, it's just not feasible to carry out um, population study studies on all rare taxa. So having this sort of um, sort of base um, where we can protect flowers um, and species that are going to more likely to go extinct, we can put those conservation actions in place um, and hopefully stop that from happening. So it's really, really exciting work. Um, I definitely recommend um, reading up on it and reading Anastasia's paper um, that she published in 2015. Um, and it's super interesting and hopefully um, we'll have some really good updates from the project um, and definitely check out the Conserve Plants Action. Um, you can find their um, website online. There's so much great research going on, all um, related to, to plant conservation um, and its biology. So it's really, really interesting. So I hope you've enjoyed um, this talk tonight. Um, I hope you learn a little bit more, you know, about plants, um, plant pollinator interactions um, and find it interesting. And um, like I said, hopefully, hopefully floral complexity and this index is going to be a really important um, new conservation tool that we can really utilise. So thank you very much for listening. Okay.